the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. The Word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Together we pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are welcome to living streams of water, where the flow of grace continue to come within our hearts, so that we may be enlightened to forge ahead on the mission. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Augustine, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Augustine was born around 354 and in Africa. In all this, there is something that we need to know. And what is that? Yesterday we celebrated St. Monica. And his son we are celebrating today, St. Augustine. St. Augustine in his early life lived a life of debauchery. And one may ask, We've been hearing of saints, saints, saints. Are they all people who began doing good things till the end? No. The life of St. Augustine is something that we need to learn. He lived a life of debauchery. And throughout this life, he wanted to know about knowledge, wisdom. But in knowing all this, he also followed a kind of doctrine. And that doctrine tells us that the body has imprisoned the soul in. Hence, what about everything that the body does doesn't affect the soul. So, what happens? The body can do whatever that he wants to do. In that regard, he did all that today we may term as vice. But remember, he had a turning point in his life. When he came face to face to meet St. Ambrose, who, as at that time, was the bishop, his word of preaching, his words of encouragement, and also the fervent prayer of his mother, St. Monica, changed the life of St. Augustine. My dear brother, my dear sister, St. Augustine got himself baptized, he became a priest, he became a bishop and wrote extensively on a lot of things about the church. Today, the Catholic Church sees him as a hero. He sees him as one who brings forth the real nature of the humankind. And one of his greatest things that he wrote, he says, Oh, long late have I seen this love of God that has flourished upon me. Yes, it is true. But yes, he has come to become a great person in future. As we celebrate St. Augustine, we want to pray for all those who bear the name Augustine and the various institutions that bear the name Augustine, 
that their patron saint will continue to pray for them. Today we would like to reflect with the first reading of Wednesday of the 21st week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You remember our labor and toil, brethren. We worked night and day that we might not burden any of you while we preached to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also how holy and righteous and blameless was our behavior to you, believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exalted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in the manner of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. The word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yesterday St. Paul made us to understand that there are three things that help us as Christian life. Faith, hope, and love. And yesterday you continued to tell us that no matter the persecution that comes your way, no matter the difficulties that comes your way, know that it is in persevering. It is seeing the other person. It is availing yourself for the other person that brings about the great love that God has for us today. He is reminding the people of Thessalonica that one, when they came to them, they never placed a burden on them. What does it mean by burden? Burden here will be as a pastor, as a minister of God, you go to a community where you have been handed over they must get you the best vehicle in this world. They must get you the best shoes to wear. They must get you the best things so that you may even live higher than all other person in the church. St. Paul wanted the people of Thessalonica to know that he and the various people who came to those community, they worked day and night day and night not only by time they worked day and night to make sure that they don't put so much burden upon the people beloved in Christ when burden is placed on people as a minister of God you don't help the people to grow in the grace of charity because they give because they are forced to give they do the good because they are forced to do it but you need to allow them not to say that it is not needed but for them to do that out of their gratitudes their gratitudesness the grace that God has placed upon us through their own heart and that becomes of a greater measure and a blessing to each and every one of them not that I need this, go and buy me this go and set this for me, no in life, you don't have to put burden upon people. Secondly, he told them something. That the word of God that they brought to humanity, it is not their own words. So they didn't conjure any word from any place and will not tell them anything if it's not coming from God. My dear brother, my dear sister, today we have ministers of God that even impose burden on others because before I get to where I am, you should have provided this and this and that. My dear brother, my dear sister, the word of God is life. The word of God is grace. 
The word of God penetrates through the marrows of our body. The word of God transforms and renews our life. It is not human ways. And let us know that through this same word of God, heaven and earth were made. And that spoken word brought transformation to humanity. May the word of God that comes to you each day becomes a source of life, become a source of livelihood, become a source of grace and a way to penetrate through your heart so that you may take away the heart of stone and implant the heart of flesh. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you. May he face shed its light upon you and grant you his peace. May he bless your business and bless all your undertaking and guide you in a way that brings forth the grace of God. May he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearns for you, my Lord. Psalm 42, verse 1. Beloved in Christ, your soul is longing for the Lord. My soul is longing for the Lord. Our souls are yearning for the word of God. Our souls need refreshment from the word of God. And that is also often said to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. That for as the rain and the snow comes down from the skies, and do not return before having watered the air. Join me and other priests of the Archdiocese of Tamale from the 1st of June 2019 to listen and watch the living streams of water on our YouTube channel, Depsicon TV Tamale, and Facebook channel, Department of Pastoral and Social Communication. Depsocon Taman. Each day, 12 noon. Listen, may God restore, renew, and strengthen your faith in the Catholic Church.